guys my name is ankush kaurav and i welcome you to gone to series so far in the rest series of tutorials i talked about how to develop get and put kind of rest apis now in this tutorial let's talk about when and how to develop those kind of rest apis which would demand post kind of requests to be made on them so let's start Guys, in general, when do we go on developing Git type of REST APIs? Well, in only those kind of cases when certain resource is present at the server and you want user to read that resource. And in the similar manner, when you want to develop put kind of REST APIs, well, in only those kind of cases when certain resource is present at the server and you want user to make a request to update that resource with certain information what user is supposed to be sending along with the request in the similar manner same question arises for post kind of rest apis so in what scenarios you want to build post kind of rest apis well the simplest answer is you go for developing post kind of a rest api only for those kind of cases when you want user to make a request to create a new resource at the server that's all about it now what does creating a new resource means well it just only means that uh, you want user to send some new information to the server which is uh, not existing there so that later on a request could be made by using some other rest api to read that information let me explain you this uh, overall concept with the help of a very simple requirement in this demo application so here my requirement is uh, very simple all i want is user to send new students information or record to the application and application should insert that record into the database so that later on this rest api can be used to read that student's record so question is what all tasks i need to be performing here so as to fulfill this requirement guys here what i would do i would uh, build this rest api and provide it to all the users of this application so when a user is going to make a post kind of a request on this rest api with uh, the information of a new student's record so when that request is going to reach to the application this application is simply going to insert that new student's record into the database if it's successfully able to insert it's going to return true in the response otherwise it's going to return false so what kind of uh, code i need to write to build this rest api well that's uh, very easy guys for get type of rest apis we included this rest api controller method for put kind of rest api we included this rest api controller method in the similar manner for this you know post kind of a rest api we simply need to include a new rest api controller method here in this controller class and we will be done so let us uh, do one thing let us include that here and later on i will explain all related concepts in detail so here i'm done with including this rest api controller method for the kind of rest api we wanted to develop in this tutorial so now after we have included this uh, controller method here when a user is going to make a post request on this rest api with the uh, the new students record when that request is going to reach the application this application is going to simply make a call to this rest api controller method why because of these three arguments now important point for you to understand here that this accepts only new students information you know which uh, has come along with the request in the json format only it doesn't accept any other format because of this consumes arguments value what we have written over here so after this uh, method has been called by the application for this request this request body annotation is simply going to map this new student's json record with this student java object so how it's going to work well it's going to work exactly 
the way I explained you in the earlier tutorial while explaining you this put kind of a REST API development task. So once the new student's information you know, has been mapped to this student object, this controller method is going to insert this record into the database. And if it's able to successfully do so, it's going to return true with status code as 200 OK. Otherwise, it's going to return false. Now here, I'm not writing, I'm not writing the exact, uh, you know, code if else kind of clauses just to keep this tutorial a bit simpler. In your case, uh, you got to write the actual logic based on your project's requirement in your real time project. All right. So after we have included this controller method here in this Java class, now when I'm going to make a post request on this REST API, with the new students record which I want application to insert into the database. Let's say I want application to insert this student's record whose name is DRock. So this new student has a has a hobby WWE. One of the hobbies. So when I'm going to make a post request on this REST API with this new student's record for the student whose name is The Rock, what would happen? Well, after inserting this record successfully into the database, it's going to return true and status code as 200. Okay, let's check whether that happens or not. Cool, so it's happening. Here I've got true as response body and 200 okay as status code. Now, important point for you to understand here is for post kind of a REST API controller method, generally when request is successfully processed by the respective controller method, developers do not send status code as 200 OK. So instead of uh, this, they prefer sending some other status code 201 created. So now when I'm going to make a post request with this new student's information to the application, I would receive here 201 created instead of 200 OK. Now, you would ask me a question, Ankush, what's the difference between 200 OK and 201 created? Well, there's not much difference between the two. 200 OK signifies that uh, whatever request client has made to the server, that request is successfully processed there. And 201 created signifies that whatever resource client wanted to create at the server, that's uh, successfully created there. So there's not much difference between the two. It's just about the developer's preference, you know, to choose 201 created over 200 OK for such a kind of a REST API development. Now, one last concept, let's try to understand. What I'll do, I'll write a piece of code over here and I would explain that piece of code once after showing you its output. So keep observing what I'm writing here. Here I've included a key value pair, key as location and value as this. So let's pass HTTP headers reference as second argument to this so that uh, whatever key value pair we have added over here that should also be sent along with the response. Now what value we have added over here let's try to understand that after seeing its output. So now after this change when I'm going to make a post request on this REST API with the intention to you know make a request to create this resource at the server, what response I get? Let's see. So here I've got true as response body, 201 created as response status. And in addition to these two, I've also got this key value pair in the response as response header. Now what's this? Because here with this piece of code, what I've added this REST API controller method is just telling to the client that whatever resource it has just created, you know, what 
ever students record it has inserted into the database that resource can be read by making a get request on this rest api that's what it means so if you look at the value for it this is what it's conveying so if you make a get request on this rest api you know by specifying the name of the student at the end of the rest api this one this application is going to return the student's information back as a response so the overall concept of what you have to note down here is when you develop post kind of a rest api controller method when it's uh, successfully able to create the resource for that request then it should be sending the rest api which that client can make use of to read that source and uh, also 201 created is the status code what generally developers prefer to send in the response uh, when the corresponding controller method is successfully able to process the request or successfully able to create the resource in the next tutorial i will talk about how to develop those kind of rest apis which will demand delete kind of a request to be made on them all right guys a big thank you for learning rest api concepts using spring mbc framework with me if you have any feedback or any constructive comment or you want me to upload a very specific topic in this series or you want me to altogether upload a brand new series on this channel gone to series do post me a comment below the video or write to me on this email id for all of your queries please uh, like this video share this video if this has proved useful to you and uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel gone to series and i'm going to catch you in the next part of this tutorial